Accelerate Biomed is a biomedical innovation company accelerating high-impact technologies to patients through risk-reward sharing partnerships. Now, the partnership-enabled business model focuses on forging strategic collaborations with leading medical device companies to drive successful global commercialization of those products. And with me is David Hockman, the chairman and CEO, and great to have you here. Thanks, Jake. Gabe, yeah. kind of an overview yeah. of Orchestra Biomed. Explain the business in your words. Like, what do sure. you do? Well, most importantly, we're focused on high-impact therapies, and we're targeting really the number one and two medical problems around the world high blood pressure and atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or artery disease. And so these are the number one drivers of morbidity and mortality. And even more, we're focusing on the highest uh, need patients really within those populations. You also talked about our business model. And so these are huge unmet needs, large established markets. And we are enlisting the help of global leaders like Medtronic is one of our partners so to make sure when we finish the development, that's really what our responsibility of getting the clinical data so you, you can get approval from the FDA and other regulatory agencies, our partners take over. And they're already well-established leaders in these markets. And that's going to help make sure the products can be manufactured, marketed, and distributed all over the world. And then we make money by sharing in the revenues through royalties. Okay. So it could be a very profitable business while making a really important impact on patients. Now, when you said that you're taking like the business model of pharma yeah. and applying it to medical devices, that kind of clicked with me. So that's basically what you're doing, right? Well, we were inspired by the kind of strategic partnerships that we hear about all the time in the pharma industry and that have been fundamental to how new drugs have been developed for the last 30 plus years. I think all of us learned about this during COVID. The BioNTech Pfizer partnership was in everyone's uh, headlines. The partnerships in pharma are critical. Small companies, often publicly traded, that are developing new therapies, partner with bigger companies, the Mercs, the Pfizers, to help finance and execute the development, but then more importantly, commercialize the products. And we thought, why can't we bring this to the medical device space where actually market leaders are much more constrained in their ability to finance and execute new innovation? but haven't really used partnerships as a means to uh, drive new innovation. And, and for us, it, it really lets us focus on what we think we do best, which is create technology and drive it through the clinical trials needed and bring partners in that do everything else much better than you know, we may, yeah. could ever do it. And these that do FDA approvals, clinical trials, everything? Um... So we focus on the clinical trials. Okay. All the way back to identifying the problem, creating the solution, and taking that through clinical trials, our lead program, which is partnered with Medtronic, a hypertension therapy called AVIM therapy, we're in our pivotal trial now. So the data from that would be used for approval. But actually Medtronic would file for approval with FDA, um, and then they would take over from, from their right. commercialization. Our other program is partnered with a large Japanese company called Taruma. Okay. So partners are established. Those are global leaders, and our job is to get the data. And um, uh, describe some of the products you mentioned, sure. high blood pressure. I mean, what are kind of breakthroughs have you had? Well, our, our therapy, AVIM, it actually stands for Atrioventricular Interval Modulation Therapy. So we developed it. We own over 120 issued patents on the technology. What's fascinating, this is a therapy that is delivered as new programming, essentially firmware integrated into a well-established device, a pacemaker. Mm -hmm. Actually, Medtronic invented the pacemaker. They're the global dominant market leader in cardiac pacing therapy. So our therapy essentially is a program added to their established device that immediately, substantially, and persistently lowers blood pressure, a new capability for patients that takes advantage of a device that's been around for over 60 years. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, there's over a million patients worldwide that get pacemakers every year. The number one comorbidity is hypertension or high blood pressure, and they're older higher risk patients that are more difficult to treat, and their high blood pressure is a near and present risk of heart attack, stroke, and progression to heart failure. So you really want to control blood pressure, but it's difficult to do with existing therapies alone. Now we're adding a capability that's in the device they already need, that when you turn it on, blood pressure drops. We've seen double digit reductions in systolic blood pressure in two previous clinical trials, and now we're running a global pivotal study, and Medtronic would then run with that and bring that to, Medtronic controls over 50% of the U.S. market and about the same globally. So we have the best partner we could have to both 
be executing this work and then know if we're successful, when we're successful, we're very confident in the therapy that it can be made available to patients and physicians worldwide. Um, and the, is it a royalty-based business model? A absolutely. Okay. Um, uh, our focus is, is we're spending our money and time to get the data and prove the efficacy and safety of our therapies. When Medtronic or our other partner take over, will participate through royalty interest in, uh, in, in their sales, substantial double-digit royalties. So it's, it's a very high-profit margin type of profile and very capital-efficient business. Okay. We're working on data. We're doing the research. At the end of the day, we don't have to spend money on building a sales force or building manufacturing. Medtronic takes care of, of all of that. So. And they already do it. And they have the best people in the world. They have the best devices. And they're already selling those devices worldwide. So we really have the best partner in, in Medtronic for our ABI and therapy program. Now talk about uh, the orchestra leadership team yeah. and the experience um, that you all have in medical devices. So I'm really proud to lead mm -hmm. a highly experienced team that even more importantly are, are made up of people that want to have been doing what we need to do best, creating new intellectual property, new therapies, and guiding that through clinical development to the market. Our leadership team, on average, has 25 to 30 years' experience each. The other thing about the team is a lot of us have worked together for years. My partner and I have nearly 18 years working together. So we know each other and have overlapping skill sets. And so it's a real honor to lead a team like that. But we're a small company, actually. Uh, I, got, I sort of talk about our growth and headcount in parallel to how large is a symphony orchestra. We're in the romantic period right now I, yeah. at around 70 people. Okay. So we don't need to be a big company. Yeah. We need to have talented people who know what they're doing, need to be great at clinical trials, and that's that's what we do best. Do you incorporate AI at all in any of your data uh, research? Well, or? interesting, a few different ways. And obviously, AI tools are really important to any business in terms of how you do research and analyze data, increasingly so. But mm -hmm. Um, and other than our operations, we are eventually, I think, AI will factor into therapies like AVIM that are really driven by a pacemaker, essentially a small computer helping to stimulate the heart um, in various ways. Our therapy now makes it capable of lowering blood pressure. Mm -hmm. We don't need AI to run the therapy, but sometime in the future, it could play a role in optimizing what would then be mm -hmm a well-established therapy. Yeah. And explain the future. Um, any more products in the pipeline, the clinical trials, kind of what are you looking forward to the next one to two years? So uh, we're running the Backbeat Global Pivotal Study, which is focused on AVIM therapy for treatment of hypertension. Um, we think that study will be the, the key study to seek the first regulatory approvals. And we see the therapy, one, being applicable to that pacemaker population, but we just were granted breakthrough device designation by the FDA for the therapy for a broader population of patients, essentially patients with hypertension that have increased cardiovascular risk. And really if you look at that, that's most people over 65 and a lot of other patients where you're really worried about that high blood pressure driving other events. So this trial will help inform and maybe um, allow us to gain approval for a broader indication of patients. But that population is millions of patients. There's a billion people with hypertension worldwide. Mm. We're still focusing on less than 1%, mm. but these are the highest risk patients. For our other therapy called Virtue, uh, Virtue Seralimus Angio Infusion uh, Balloon, this is a treatment, really novel differentiated treatment for artery disease, but built on established, proven drug and device technology. The drug we're delivering is the drug on every drug eluding stent. It's been proven to be effective, but we're delivering that with a balloon that's only in the body for maybe a minute. So you don't have to leave behind a metal implant. So we're taking proven technology, but we've done a, a great job of figuring out how to get them to work without that permanent implant. Uh, shortly, we're about to start. We just got FDA approval to start our pivotal trial in a coronary indication. But we think there are other applications to that technology and also to ABIM. We think hypertension leads to treating heart failure. For virtue, we think coronary indications lead to treating peripheral artery disease and to leveraging our technology into other indications. Mm -hmm. Going back to last, the business model lends itself to us continuing to either develop or acquire earlier stage technology and partner them similarly with large corporations to advance it. So we intend to be doing this type of high impact innovation in this partnership enabled business model, hopefully for a long time to come. 
leveraging the royalty base mm -hmm. um, inflows to allow us to impact more conditions in the future. Okay, David, thank you. Thanks. Fascinating. It was thank great, you. To have, uh, great to be here. Thank you.